Now that the pictures and papers are in place on my digital scrapbook page, I can begin adding embellishments. The first embellishment that I want to add is a different ribbon. Although I really like the ribbon that came with this template, the colors don't match my photos and papers very well. Rather than try to change it, I have chosen a green ribbon to use instead. As you can see here, I'm going to click it and drag it onto my project. Now it appears below many of my other templates. There are a couple of different ways, of course, to move it. We can move it in the layers palette like we've done before. Um, just move it all the way to the top, but you can also right click on the element in your project and choose bring forward, which will bring it forward one space, so it would bring it in front of the large white frame. Or you can choose bring to front, which will bring it all the way to the top of your layers palette. So now I can move my ribbon and resize it using the corner handles until it is just about the same size as the ribbon that's below it. That's pretty good. I'm going to accept that change. We need a second ribbon to cover the other one, so I'm going to right click on the layer with the ribbon and hit duplicate layer the same way we did with the white pattern paper in the previous tutorial. So we have the two ribbons there. The duplicate ribbon appears just on top of the original ribbon that we used, the original green ribbon that we used. So we're going to move it, we'll move it down and to the right, position it over the other cream colored ribbon. Now you can see these ribbons are overlapping the photos and we want them to appear um, underneath the photos the same way that the cream ribbons did. So we're going to move them individually. We're going to move the one that's on the right side down until it is just above the ribbon, the original ribbon that's on the right, right there. And we'll do the same thing with the other one until it is just above the ribbon that's on the left like that. I'm also going to hide the original ribbons just to be on the safe side that nothing is peeking through. And there we go. I'd like to add some uh, a cluster of embellishments to this upper left hand square um, because it's going to be rather empty. The journaling is going to be in this bottom square. And the um, elements that I want to add are this green heart, which I'll drag onto our project, this clock, and this pink button, I'd like it to go in the center of that clock. So you can see those elements are sort of hidden behind some of the embellishments, um, some of the other elements on the page. So over here in the layers palette, I'm going to find those three embellishments. There's the button, um, the clock, and the heart. And I can choose those all together by either hitting uh, the control key and choosing each one individually, or I can choose them by choosing the very top one, the button, and then holding the shift key down and choosing the bottom one and it will select all of those elements together. Now I can click on those layers in the layers palette and just move them all the way to the top so I can work on those. Um, while they are all selected I can also click on those elements on the project and move them all at the same time and then just click elsewhere to deselect. So I want this clock to be much smaller, about like that, and I want this button to go in the center of it. This heart I want to be a little bit more of a shade of green, closer to the green in the ribbon. So we're going to change the hue of it similar to the way we changed the hue of the pink pattern paper in the background. I'm going to go to Layer up at the top here and New Adjustment Layer hue and saturation. and I'm going to be sure to click this group with previous layer so that the adjustments I make only happen to the heart and not to the rest of the page. So I want to change it a little bit more of a green, or maybe a little bit lighter, something closer to the green of that ribbon. And just play around with the sliders until you get it the way you want it. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to hit OK and move it. I'm going to size that down just a little bit. I can also, if I hold my cursor at the edge a little bit outside of those corner handles, you see I get the sort of rounded arrows. That allows me to rotate my image slightly. I'm going to tilt that heart off to the side a little bit. I like that. 
I'm going to bring this clock, I want it above the heart, bring it over a little bit. Say there, I want it to overlap, and then the button. I like the size of the button pretty well. All right. I like that arrangement. So I can link these layers together now so that when I click on it and try to move it, it will move all three of the layers instead of just one, since I really like how they are arranged at the moment. So again, I'm going to select that um, top, the top layer, which is the button layer. I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to go down. Um, the next layer is the clock and then the adjustment layer for the heart and the heart. So I can hold down the shift key and just click on the heart. It will select all of those layers. And then in the layers palette, this little icon up here that looks like a chain link, when I click it, you'll see that little icon appears next to each of those layers, meaning that those layers are all linked together. Now when I click on those layers in the project and move it around, it moves all of them together. I can also resize them together if I wanted to. We'll make them a little bit bigger there. I like that pretty well. I think I might move it over until it's off the edge a little bit. And the final embellishment that I want to add to this project is a brush file with some words. So we're going to go over here to the tool palette and we're going to choose the brush tool. And I'm going to find the brush that I want to use. I think I have it selected. I do. And I'm going to go to the layers palette and I'm going to create a new layer, which is this little square icon right here. And what that does is create a blank layer. I'm going to move that layer to the very top so it'll show. And then with the brush tool selected, I'm going to choose the color that I want and I want sort of a brown. You can see when I double click on this uh, the color palette squares gives me a color chooser and you can see the eyedropper tool. I'm going to use it on my photo here in the corner and try to get a nice brown and then I can move this little icon or this little circle around until I get the brown color that I want and I really like that there. I'll click OK and then back to my brush tool and I'm going to click and there it is. And now because it's on its own layer, because we create, created a new layer and put it there, I can size this down till it's just the size that I want it to be and I want it to fit right across this area. I can move it until it's exactly where I want it to be and that is perfect. Okay, now I think what I want to do is take one of the staples that are over here on the ribbons and add it to the heart embellishment here to make it look like it has been stapled to the paper. So I'm going to click on one of those staples duplicate the layer and then drag it until it is just above the heart layer. I'm going to zoom in because that duplicate staple is still sitting right on top of the original staple. And I'm going to drag it up on my project. Maybe rotate it a little bit so it looks like that heart is stapled to the paper. And I'm going to add that staple to our linked layers. So I'm going to click on the heart and then hold the shift key down, click on the button. I'm going to click that chain link icon again and it's going to add the staple to that so that when I move those around they will um, stay all together. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to size that down a little bit. I think one thing I do want to do is change that saturation on the heart and make it just a little bit more dull, a little bit less bright. More like that ribbon. I think that's just about right there. I like that. And the final thing I want to add 
um, in this tutorial is the journaling and that's going to go in this bottom square over here. We can do that a couple of different ways. We're going to go over to the tool palette and choose the text tool. You can either click and start typing or you can draw a um, text box. I'm going to choose the text tool again. I'm going to click, hold down and drag to create a text box. Up here along this ribbon underneath the um, menu options you have some <clears throat> adjustment options. You can choose your font. You can choose the font size. You can also choose the letting, which is the space in between the lines of text. And we'll play with that a little bit. Um, I have my journaling already saved. I've copied it from the original <clears throat> page I created. And so I'm going to paste it in here. You can see there it is. And you can adjust. It looks like I need to adjust my text box because it has cut off some of my journaling. So I'm going to, with the text tool selected, grab and adjust that. Now if I were to choose the move tool and then select that text area, I can move the entire thing around. But if I adjusted the corners, I could actually make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to not accept that. And let's see, with the Move tool selected, I can select all, oops, try again, select all of my text, and I can change the letting. I'll show you, it's set at 20, so if I changed it to 24, it puts more space <clears throat> in between all of the words. So you can make your words fit exactly where you want it. Now, as you see, 20 is not an option on this list. So what I'm going to do is actually click in this area up here, highlight that 24 and type in 20. So you can precisely space your text to fit exactly where you want it to fit. In the next tutorial we're going to add some finishing touches to our scrapbook page and we will be done.